Hey everybody, welcome back. We're at Factor Markets. It's the second video that we're doing on Factor Markets and we're finally getting graphical. The basic one, the one we, we just shot, we went through some definitions, some terms. Now we're ready to start graphing, okay? Factor Market, perfect competition. Whoa, sounds a lot like product market in perfect competition. Just remember, in these graphs, what's being supplied and demanded is a factor or a resource, okay? Now, I've put dollars over one factor and quantity of factors. I'm going to not use the word factor the whole time. I'm going to pick a particular resource or factor of production, and that's going to be labor. That's kind of my default. I go to labor, okay? So you can think of dollars per one labor or one labor hour or one labor day. It doesn't really matter for the concept. Quantity of laborers, okay? We've got a side-by-side -side analysis. You haven't heard that in a while, but hey, perfect competition means side-by-side -side analysis. It means the vertical axes have to be calibrated the same. However, the horizontal does not. In fact, I've got a little mess up here. I've got a capital Q. I'm going to get rid of that. I want the lower Q. Why? Because here we might have hundreds of thousands of laborers. Over here, maybe it's just 100. Maybe it's only 10, okay? Much smaller number over here. Why? Because the graph on the left is the market, okay? It's the market for a particular top type of labor, maybe even like we can think of a particular skill. Over here is one firm hiring that particular type of labor. So we've got a labor market, we've got one firm hiring from the labor pool. So as far as supply and demand goes, pretty simple, okay? Supply of labor. Just remember that the supplier of labor, that's the household, right? Supplier of labor, that's the household. The demander of labor is the business. So there's the demand for labor. This has all the laborers in the market. This has all the businesses in the market, okay? All the laborers, all the businesses that are hiring laborers. Why do we need to draw this graph on the left? The same reason in the product market. The market sets the price. But now I'm not going to use the word price, I'm going to use the word wage. But what is wage? Wage is just the price of labor, right? So the market is going to set the wage, wage M. So that's the market wage. The firm, since it's perfect competition, there's tons of firms hiring from the same labor pool. They're going to have to take that wage. They're a wage taker. Sounds very familiar. Wage firm. Going to draw a solid line. But now I've got a super important question. In a product market, you might remember I'd always put a D right there. Well, what am I going to write? Am I going to write a demand? Am I going to write demand or am I going to write supply? We're in a factor market. Well, what is this? This is actually the supply of labor. It's not the demand for labor. Why? Because the supply of labor, they're going to work at that wage and no lower wage at all. If this firm tries to lower their wage at all, they're going to lose all the suppliers of labor. All their workers are going away. This firm has to pay that wage. They can't pay a lower wage at all. Suppliers of labor, perfectly elastic, perfectly responsive to a wage change, a wage decrease, okay? So I got my supply of labor. Now, is this the marginal factor cost of labor or the marginal revenue product of labor? Think about that for a second. Should make a lot of sense. It's the marginal factor cost of labor, right? It's how much they're going to have to pay, how much it's going to cost the firm to hire another laborer. What's it going to cost the firm to hire another laborer or to get another laboring hour? It's going to be the wage market, right? The wage is the marginal factor cost of labor. Now I'm going to put in the marginal revenue product of labor. Well, the marginal revenue product is always downward sloping, okay? It's the demand curve. It's the business's demand curve. Hopefully you remember the term derived demand. That's what tells us. Derived demand tells us the demand curve for a firm is their marginal re revenue product of labor. So let me put that in real quick. Demand, this is the demand curve of the business, is the marginal revenue product of labor. This curve represents the benefit laborers give the business because it gives them the revenue that they're getting from the resource. This curve is the cost of hiring additional resources. So how many laborers are going to be hired? Not hard, right? As long as the marginal benefits, the marginal revenue product, is more than the marginal factor, um, the marginal factor cost, as long as the marginal revenue product is more than the marginal factor cost of hiring those workers, we're going to hire them. We're going to hire them all the way to right there. But as soon as the marginal factor cost exceeds the marginal revenue product that the business is getting, they're going to stop. So Q 
profit max. This is not how many goods we're going to make. This isn't a product market. It's a factor market. This quantity is how many laborers we're going to hire. What's the rule for profit maximization? In a factor market, we're going to hire as long as the marginal revenue product of labor is greater than the marginal factor cost. We're going to stop hiring as soon as the marginal revenue product of labor equals the marginal factor cost. That's the beginning of our resource market. That's perfect competition. We'll see you in the next video.